All right, so let's start with a bell work here where we're graphing x equals 3 and y equals negative 2. Now, before we graph it, you might see here that I've given you a table, right? And one side is filled, and then you have to figure out what goes in the missing slots of the table. And then we can use these as like coordinate points, plot them, and then get a kind of a picture of what are we graphing. So let's start with filling out this table then. So notice how um, this is x equals 3 is our equation, and there's not much going on here. x just equals 3 is what it says. Um, I did fill out some y values here, but naturally we would plug in y and then find x, right? But there are no y's in this equation. Um, since this equation states that x is 3, then all these x values, well, they have to be 3. And so in this case, I'm just going to fill every slot here as 3 because that's what x has to be. So in this case here, if I treat these as coordinate system, remember, you know, these tables help us plot coordinates. Well, this is going to say x is equal to 3, which is right here, but it says y is equal to negative 1, which is down here. So I'm going to plot my point, and then I'll plot the next one, and this will be 3, 0, which is right here on that x-axis. And then it says 3, 1, which is uh, 3, and then up 1. 3, 2 is 3, and then up 2. And so notice how, like, if you were to connect the dots here, right, this sure looks like a vertical line. And it is, right? X, when it equals some number and you graph it, it's a vertical line. So vertical lines, how about I write this down here as like a, a note? Vertical lines is when you have an equation where X equals some sort of number. And there are no Y's involved, just X. And then in this next one here, notice how this time they give you y equals negative 2. So it's like, well, that means y has to be negative 2. There's no x's here to plug in anything um, to solve out for y. So um, that means y is negative 2, negative 2. And I'm just going to keep rewriting negative 2. And then from here, again, these are coordinates that we're going to plot to get a better picture of what exactly this entails on a graph. So this is negative one, which is right here on the x-axis, but it says down negative two. So down negative two is right there and plot. Then it's zero negative two. So zero is right here and then down to negative two. One negative two is gonna be right here and then two negative two is right here. And if I connect the dots, this looks like a, um, horizontal line. So notice how this horizontal line is at y equals negative 2. And so we know that uh, basically horizontal lines is when you have y, an equation that has y equal to some sort of number. So when x equals some sort of number, it's a vertical line. When y equals some number, it's a horizontal line. So I just want us to refresh on these skills because they are going to become relevant when we start graphing uh, lots of different things. So um, let's go into our today's lesson, which is about slope. So you guys probably have heard of slope before and how to find it. Um, we're going to practice that a lot today. All right, so the first thing we're going to go over is the slope formula. So the slope formula says if you have two points, so let's say x and y1 and x2 and y2. So if you're given these two points, the slope of these, um, uh, the slope of the line, basically when you connect these two points is, well, this is going to look probably familiar. It's your y2 minus y1 over your x2 minus x1 because we always put y first because you might remember slope being always your rise over your run. So you're gonna see the y's on top because y talks about, you know, your vertical movement, which is referring to the rise. Your run is referring to the uh, moving the left and right, which is your x-axis where you move left and right. Um, so here it is, the slope formula, which is a very important formula you're gonna use pretty much in um, all types of math. I can't think of a math that doesn't use slope. Um, so in this case, 
Parallel lines, well, the slope, um, when two lines are parallel, um, we know that the slope is the same. So I'll fill this in. Slope is the same. When two lines are perpendicular, that's when the slope is two things. The slope needs to be um, opposite signs. So right here, opposite signs. So basically, one's negative, one's positive, And they need to be reciprocal, or some people think of this as being like when you have a fraction and you flip it. That's what we talk about is reciprocal, as it's flipped. So these two things have to happen. They have to have opposite signs, one positive, one negative, and they have to be reciprocal of each other. So in the next slide here, we're going to you know, use the, this formula here and try to predict whether something is parallel, perpendicular, or whether they're not either one of these. So let's just start off with calculating the slope. So our slope here, notice how we are given two endpoints. So if we had to find the slope, of these po two points, basically we've connected the dots. Um, how about this? Let me label them first. So this is our, let's say our x1 and this is our y1, our first point, and this is our x2 and, uh, sorry, that should be y2. And so that's our second point. So using the slope formula, I'll just rewrite it here. Remember, it's your y2 minus y1 over your x2 minus x1. So using that formula here, I'm gonna work this out. So m is equal to my y2, which is 5, minus negative 3. Now, I notice immediately there are two negatives, so I might have to change that sign here in a moment. But let me grab the x here. So my x2 is negative 1, and my x1 is negative 2. So in this case, I both notice that these are going to be positive signs because they're two negatives. So 5 plus 3 is 8, and then negative 1 plus 2 is 1. So 8 over 1 is just 8, so my slope here looks like it's just 8. All right, in the next one here, I have uh, basically two points again. So again, I'm going to use the formula. And so this is my x, y, x, y. By the way, it doesn't matter what or whether I took this one and subtracted from this one first or if I wanted to subtract this y from that y. Just as long as I do the same order as the x's. So if I decide to subtract this y with this y, 4 minus 4, I need to make sure I subtract this x, which is negative 4, with this x. The order does matter. So 4 minus 4 is 0 divided by um, negative 4 divided by, uh, sorry, negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. But if my top here is 0, if I divide anything by 0, I get 0. So my slope here is 0. And I'm done. So hopefully this doesn't feel too heavy for you guys. Um, it's probably something you've seen before. So now I want us to look at some problems where we're actually looking at determining whether something is parallel, perpendicular. Okay, so in this slide here, um, we have to determine based off the situation uh, if something's parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So the first question here is basically, the, it says that the line passes through this point and this point, and then another line passes through this point and this point. So there are two lines here with different pairs of points. There is this one. This line goes through these points. And then there is this line that goes through these two points. So the goal is to figure out what is the slope of this guy. And then what is the slope of this one? Because if I know the slope of these two, then I can finally compare to see if it's parallel, per perpendicular, or neither. So let's start there. Let's just focus on getting the slope first for each one of them. So the first slope here is, well, I've got to grab my y's first. So this y here is negative 7. So I'll take, take negative 7, subtract it by the other y, which is 9. And then I'll take this x value, 12, and subtract it from 
the other x value, which is 15. So if I subtract the top, negative 7 minus 9 gives me negative 16. 12 minus 15 gives me negative 3, which gives me 16 over 3. So in that case here, I get 16 over 3. And I can't really reduce that. So you know what? I'll just keep it the way it is for now. And then I'll go find the other one. So the other one here, um, I need to grab my y's first. So I have negative 20 minus negative 4. So negative 20 minus negative 4. Ooh, two negatives. I'm, I need to take care of those signs here in a moment. 5 minus 8. So 5 minus 8. So the top here becomes a positive sign. And if I add negative 20 to 4, positive 4 gives me negative 16 over, well, 5 minus 8 gives me negative 3. Well, two negatives when I divide become a positive. So I really have 16 over 3 again. This is the same value or the same slope that I got for the other one. So if they're the exact identical, well, parallel says that if they're the same, the lines must be parallel. So in that case, we have, um, let me write this in black, we have parallel lines as our answer, or these two lines happen to be parallel. So this is basically when I give you like four coordinates, one pair and then another pair, and then you have to figure out their slope. What if, instead of giving you um, coordinate points, I gave you two equations, and you have to figure out if they're parallel or perpendicular. So how do you start there? Well, one way to start is to figure out the slope of this guy and this guy. And to do that, the easiest way to start is to try to get it in y equals mx plus b format, or what we call the slope intercept form. So that way you can identify the slope easily. Notice how all of these are in standard form, where x's and y's are on one side and the constants on another. So the easiest thing to start with is just to get the y by itself. If you can get y by itself, you'll figure out this slope. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna first just take this equation and try to get the y here by itself. To do that, I have to subtract x. So I'm gonna subtract x from both sides. That cancels. 4y drops down. 7 minus x drops down because I can't combine a number with a variable. And then now I'm just left with a 4 that I need to divide off. So I'm going to divide it to both terms. That cancels. And so now my equation here is y equals 7 over 4 minus, well, um, since I'm dividing this by 4, let's just pretend for a moment. What is this number in front of this x? Well, it has to be a 1 or a negative 1. So I can write this as negative 1 over 4x. So I can see what my m is in front of, or my slope is in front of this x. So here's my slope. It is negative 1 fourth. So I figured out this equation, so my slope is negative 1 fourth. Now I'm going to take this equation and also get y by itself so I can figure out the slope so I can compare what type of lines they are in relationship to them both. So in this case, I'm going to subtract 4x to both sides to start getting the, x, uh, the y by itself. So negative y comes down, 3 minus 4x comes down. Looks like I'm dividing by a negative 1 after. So that cancels. Then your y comes down. I have a negative 3. Two negatives on that negative 4 and negative 1 when I divide become a positive 4x. And so here is my other equation. Notice how my slope here, the number in front of x, is 4 and it's positive. So this is a positive 4. And when I look at these two, notice how they're different signs, they're opposite signs. And if I were to write this 4 over 1, they are reciprocal, right? So if they're opposite signs and reciprocal, meaning that their fraction is flipped, 1 over 4 is the same as saying 4 over 1 if you flip it, then this means that they happen to be perpendicular. So perpendicular is when they're opposite signs and they have to be reciprocal. So in this case, we have um, 
perpendicular lines. Now we'll try out 69. So I would pause this video and try to work this out on your own before you uh, see how I work it out. So now I'm gonna work out this problem here. Again, I have to get this equation, the y by itself first, because it's in standard form. So I'm going to subtract 4x to both sides. So that cancels, negative 3y comes down, 6 minus 4x comes down. I'm gonna divide by negative 3 to both sides. And then my y here comes down um, 6, divided by negative 3 gives me negative 2. Two negatives divided here gives me a positive 4 over 3x. So here is my um, new equation with a slope of 4 over 3. So here's my slope. Now I'm going to take a look at this equation. And again, I'm going to try to get the um, x, I'm sorry, the y by itself. So I'm going to subtract 3x over. So that cancels, giving me negative 4y equals 2 minus 3x. Then I have to divide by negative 4. So that cancels. And so my y here is equal to negative, well, 2 divided by negative 4 is negative 1 half. You can reduce that fraction. The two negatives on those sign become a positive sign. So this is really three over four x. And so in this case, here's my new equation. And it looks like my slope is three over four. So these two slope are reciprocal of each other, but they're not opposite in signs. So this case here is neither. So we have a neither situation. So basically it did fulfill that it was reciprocal, but because they're not opposite in signs, you can't state that they're perpendicular. It has to be both situation had to have happened. All right, so we have one more slide after this and um, the next slide is, is probably going to feel a lot easier than what we just did. Uh, since you guys know how to rearrange equations now and know about the slope intercept form. All right, so um, if you guys hadn't noticed, there was optional homework up here for you guys to choose from. So I've just chosen some of them for us to work on. But if you want more problems to work on, uh, check out these homework problems on the Google Classroom. Those are the homework problems that I recommend from that section. So slope intercept form was that y equals mx plus b. Basically your m being your slope and your b being your y enter. Set. So um, what we're going to be doing quite a bit in the next few days is that we have to be able to write linear equations or write equations. Um, so in this case, to write a linear equation, you generally need two ingredients. You need a slope and you need a y-intercept. So the nice part about problem 15 and 16 is that they give you the slope, they give you the y-intercept, so all you got to do is plug it in. So in this case, I have y equals 5x plus 15 for my b. And then this one, I have y equals negative 2 for my m, x plus b, which is 12. And then I'm done. So this, they just want you to construct it. Now, the problems that you're going to be seeing later on is not going to be this easy. Um, basically, there are going to be times where you have to figure out Maybe I give you two points and you have to figure out the slope and then you have to figure out the y-intercept from that to figure out what is your, um, your actual um, equation. So it could be a little bit tougher, but I want us to start off with something that is fundamental. Um, and then this one here says write the equation in slope-intercept form, which means that, you know, in this format, y is by itself and you should have your slope and your y-intercept on the other side. So in this case, all we're going to try to do, because they're both in standard form, is to try to get the y by itself. So this one's not too bad. I just have to add x to both sides. So that cancels. y comes down. 4 plus x comes down. And now I have it in y-intercept form. 
because the y is finally by itself. Um, this one here, I have to subtract 6x to both sides. That cancels, 5x, or sorry, 5y comes down, 30 minus 6x comes down. Then I have to divide by 5 to both terms. And then y comes down, 30 divided by 5 is 6, minus 6 divided by 5 is my slope. So 6 divided by 5 is, or 6 over 5 is my slope here. And then this is it, y is by itself. All right, so this is it for this journal. I just wanted us to cover just the fundamental idea of how do you find the slope? How do you determine if something is two lines or parallel, perpendicular? And how do you rearrange formulas or equations that are in standard form into slope intercept form? In the next lesson, we will talk more about how do you re rearrange things, but mainly how do you write equations uh, given certain conditions? All right, until next time. Bye, guys.